So let's get to you know our, our topic, right? So so today we're going to talk about the the practicalities of zero trust. Um, I thought you know that with the panelists here, we will spend just a, a few minutes on on just level setting on what zero trust actually is. Um, I, for some of you guys on the on the phone, you know you might already know what zero trust concepts are. Uh, but I figured we will we'll spend you know sort of five minutes with um, Chris and, and Fred just to get their thoughts on on zero trust, how they define it, and then sort of the way they look at it. So let's start with you, Chris. Right, like you're the you're the guest, um, um, and and where do you well, how do you define zero trust? Right, like like there's depending on who you ask, depending on you know which vendor you talk to, is it a, a technology? Is it a framework? Is it a process? You know what what, what is it? Yeah, uh, well, I, I can easily say it's it's not a product, uh, one single product you buy. Uh, definitely on the methodology and, and framework side, and really, it's it's something uh, IT folks have been doing for decades. You know, before cybersecurity even existed, right? Managing mainframes, uh, zero trust is, is something we've been doing a very long time, and I, I really think it's it's just um, uh, least privileges, right? We we've always been doing that. We've always strived for that. Um, whether you're in cybersecurity or IT. Um, so yeah, the, more more on the methodology side, uh, less on just you know one product you buy and then you're done. So more of a journey, just like cybersecurity. Yeah, it, it, it's really interesting, right? Like I, I forgot who I was talking to uh, in the hall, well, actually not in the hallways, but virtually. But you know, a lot of you guys are, are actually um, doing concepts of least privileges, right? Like if you, if you remember back in the day when we all used to go to offices, your bad didn't get you to all the rooms that are in the office, right? Like there are certain ones that IT rooms, for example, they would never let the marketing guy in because I have no business in there. And so you know, you already had, kind of have a sense of that. And we'll talk about uh, this a little later on in terms of how things that you're doing today already applies to, to zero trust. And so it's not a you know, uh, lip from nothing. Um, before we move on, I also want to kind of you know uh, ask Fred you know a quick, quick, quick question about uh, zero trust, right? Like there's a lot of talk about zero trust over the last couple of years. You know, it's been more of a topic you know um, uh, in the industry as a whole. There is some some question that that is zero trust. Is that like an official standard? Is it part of a standard? You know, talk to us a little bit about you know, about, about the zero trust within that context of, of you know sort of compliance frameworks or cybersecurity frameworks. Yeah, I, th I think we were just sort of talking about this a little bit ago and, and sort of making light, you know, all things that are uh, wonderful as a standard, you know, take five to 10 years to become applicable for the rest of us. Uh, but there is a, you know, there is a framework for architecture that NIST has put out. But, um, you know, I think we would all agree that understanding how to implement that would be something uh, very specific and topical to, you know, each organization looking to do that. So I, I think there's a lot of statements around what the framework of, of zero trust could be. But to follow on what, what Chris is talking about, there's elements that we already see that we do, but you know, become a lot more applicable when we think about, well, I can't trust everybody that's in my office now, right? Via VPN. And so I have a different policy for them. Uh, it's a policy that I've got to set for every single person accessing every single resource. And so it becomes a little bit more like you know things that maybe historically we would uh, we would think about in terms of uh, you know accessing federal infrastructure or you know some of the requirements of DoD, right? But it's it's definitely been around a while. It's just now it's becoming super topical for sure. Please subscribe and check out more content from us.